might just kick off with the topic that we're all familiar with, which is field data collection. Uh, Simon, you and I constantly talk about this, how um, mobile data collection has really changed the game, you know, taking us from one old workflow to a new one. So I guess what's your take on how field force enabled solutions have changed? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm still very much a fan of paper-based maps, more for sort of framing and, and putting on the wall. Like when it comes to, to data collection, for me, when I go out into the field, I'm, I've been burnt too many times by unfolding maps and struggling to, to fold them back together again. <laughs> you need a degree just to fold them back up. Yeah. So for me personally, I'm definitely a digital guy when it comes to, to doing data collection in the field. But we still see quite a lot of organisations using paper for some of their data collection workflows involving maps. And I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but there's a number of problems, right? The first one being that doubling up of work. So the, the problem of people going out to the field, usually with maps that have been printed from the GIS, mm -hmm. scribbling on those maps, putting handwriting on there, potentially getting the maps wet with the rain. And then at the end of the day, giving that to the GIS officer who then has to double up and enter that into the system. And that kind of leads to the second problem, the, the, the lag time between that data sort of being recorded on paper and actually making its way into the GIS, which kind of leads to problems, inaccuracies with reporting, and also some timely decisions not being made. And the last one, and I think probably the most important one, is that data quality angle. So we've probably seen some of those maps with pretty bad handwriting and all sorts of sort of scribbles on them. You're not quite sure what they mean. With a, a GPS-enabled device, you have much clearer data being recorded, the ability to kind of snap to existing GIS layers that are in the map. Um, that, that really kind of, you know, the, the intelligent form logic, you know, the ability to kind of select a species and it sub, you know, filters down the next field for the subspecies you need to collect. And all of that essentially leads to much better data being recorded. And I'd say over the last five years, the ESRI mobility apps have been our most popular apps, even above and beyond things like ArcGIS Desktop. And there's good reasons for this, right? Um, especially in Australia. So there is the ability, as you can see on the screen here, to collect data in online environments, but also offline. So you can capture data in offline environments, so particularly useful. Uh, but also being able to search the GIS data that's in the map, um, follow your location, um, the ability to kind of switch out the, the, the base map, maybe the Department of Resources aerial imagery under there, and also understand the locations of other field workers. So Tara, if you're out in the field, for me to sort of see where you are and optimise where we should meet for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> which is probably one of my favorite things when it comes to those. Um, but absolutely, I have to agree with you 100% on that, I think. I, I've worked with, you know, um, a, a lot of data, like particularly when I was studying, I had to take, you know, pages and pages of paper maps. It was always the worst thing to get my paper maps wet, and we didn't have mobile <laughs> solutions at that time. Um, so now, mobile solutions have really changed the game. Um, I've also worked with managers who want to see, you know, their um, field force location when they're out in the field, particularly for health and safety or in emergency scenarios. So having that mobile solution um, really, really helps. Um, it also helps to divvy up work. Um, I've been in scenarios when we've incorporated things like workforce, and it's great to see that a new you know, uh, work order's come in, uh, Simon's closer to it, so he'll pick it up this time, catch up over lunch, and then I'll get the next one since I'll be in proximity. Yeah, just to highlight what you said there, that's, that's the really important one. Like mm -hmm. If I've spent an hour driving out to site to go and do a particular work order, if another work order pops up near me, I kind of want to deal with it there and then, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to kind of do that same trip out the next day. Um, and the geofencing capability, to me, yeah. in ArcGIS field maps, that's, that's the most powerful yeah. feature that's new. Um, it's reassuring that it actually, instead of me manually checking if I'm in a risk zone, it'll automate telling me if I'm in potentially a, a, a risk zone. So that's, that's a really powerful one. Mm. All right, guys, I'm, I'm going to chime in here. I've got a, a bit of a spidey sixth sense going on. <laughs> I reckon that there's probably some questions out in the audience. Uh, if you said the words field maps a lot here today, um, we're all used to tools like Collector and Navigator and Tracker and Explorer, right? Um, you know, are these the same thing? What are you talking about? Is this the same same product? What, what's to go there? Oh, you've oh, you look, yeah. said Collector, you've pulled on my heartstrings. Um, <laughs> Collector's going to live uh, forever in my heart, right? Um, and you're not wrong there. So previously, we, you know, integrated Collector and Explorer and Tracker, you know, to do all of our location and our, our field data collection. Uh, and ArcGIS Maps is actually the evolution of the amalgamation of all of those applications that are being deprecated. Um, but not to worry, I do want to reassure everybody that uh, Esri is working really hard. They've listened to user feedback and they are going to incorporate uh, workforce as well as Navigator into field maps. So at least we still have those similar workflows that are coming into the newer applications. I might just chime in um, yeah, yeah. before Wayne's spicy sense <laughs> kicks off. Um, I often get a question around Survey123 and Quick Capture, and you know what's what's happening with them. If we've had all of these other apps deprecated and brought into Field Maps, 
is the same thing going to happen for Survey123 and Quick Capture? The answer is no, because they actually provide a slightly different role to what we see with field maps. And if, if you are struggling to sort of choose between the two, because it, it can be confusing, do I start in field maps or do I start in survey one, two, three? Noting, of course, they all work together eventually. Mm -hmm. But where do you start? So a good rule of thumb, if your workflow has to start from a map interface, so you need to see the location of where you are or, or where you're sort of kicking off your tasks, start in field maps. But if your workflow starts with a form, then survey one, two, three is the best tool for you. Yeah, absolutely, Catherine. Um, it's literally like you took the thoughts right out of my mind, which is great. <laughs> um, I do want to, you know, reiterate for everybody, ArcGIS Quick Capture is an application that's been designed for rapid data collection. So think of emergency management or disaster recovery. If you have, you know, crew members out in the field, you want them to quickly um, and easily access and take in information and then move on to their next um, location. Now, while it's different from Survey123 and field maps in that way, um, it makes the perfect addition to all of these tools as an integration. All right, and, and trying to read the room again here. Uh, you know, whenever any new technology is introduced, uh, there's always some sort of adoption friction, mm, yeah. uh, and you know, people get used to using one product or another, or one workflow or another. Uh, how hard is it going to be to train up, uh, you know, teams who might already be using Collector and the other apps? How hard is it going to be f to train them up for, uh, you know, field maps? Yeah, I could probably have a stab at this because I helped a couple of agencies early to mid last year down in my my end of the country. Um, they made the move from Collector to field maps. For the administrator, um, at the back end, those same web maps that you might have spent a long time configuring, those will still work fine with field maps. Uh, for the, the end users, the field users, they will need to download a new app. So if you're an administrator and using MDM, you can roll it out to them, or they have to go to the app stores and download it. Um, I'd say the time worth spending for the administrator is looking at the new stuff that you've got available in field maps that you didn't have in Collector. So for me, it's the layer filtering, the ability to allow the users to to filter the content down to what they really need to know about. Uh, the configuring the offline areas. So you, if you've got known black spots in your region, mm. you can configure field maps to actually cook up these offline areas on a schedule and have those made available to your end users. And I've harped on about it already, but the geofencing, right? The ability mm. to, to notify your end users when they're out in the field and, and prompt them to enable tracking if you, if you yeah. want. So tracking's built into it as well. So yeah, geofencing is definitely my favorite. It's pretty cool.